just when you thought you were safe, Don LaFontaine comes back to life to play Thanos. I was a huge fan of this show for so many years that I recall the blue meth showing up on the show. I don't know if you remember that. I believe it was season two or three and Walking Dead and Breaking Bad were actually contemporary of one another at that point in time. And this was something that was very interesting and and, um, absolutely fun. And uh, that was the, that was when the show was very early, and all the characters were awesome. This episode has definitely taken its show its the show down to the lowest level of desired involvement possible. I actually feel a little bad for the new cast. Uh, these aren't bad characters. As a matter of fact, I actually really, really enjoy them. I actually like them. I like them a lot. Um, I you know I liked the the honesty of the musician guy, um, Luke. Well, Rosita's kind of turning into a little. Kind of bitchy, in my personal opinion. Sorry, that's just my opinion. She's kind of getting a little bitchy. You know, Yumiko's really interesting. Um, I do. I love all the new characters. I mean, all the new characters are, are actually really good. That Alpha, Alpha is. She's. I don't know. I, I can't decide if she's actually threatening or not. I have, still haven't been able to decide that. I think that if Negan ended up jumping somehow jumping ship and and siding with her i could see something i could see her getting you know a little nuts uh, or at least creating some sort of uh you know some sort of uh, unrest in the in the tribes and in the in the factions that are that have now uh, been been established magna that's who i was talking about nadia hilker who plays magna she's great i love her anyway the episode this episode was definitely taken uh this show down the lowest level of desired involvement possible I actually feel um, a little bad for this new cast. They aren't bad characters. It is just being rushed. And the dialogue is subpar. And definitely the worst lines are paramount paramount in this episode. The initial opening sequence was surprising and exciting. Any scene in space revealing and reminding us of a technology that once was or had existed at some at some point. As the satellite enters the atmosphere, it was uh, I was reminded of Fear the Walking Dead episode. It, this was actually one of my favorite episodes of uh, Fear the Walking Dead, and I actually did must I I loved the first few epi- few seasons of of, of uh, Fear the Walking Dead. Um, well, the first the very first season was, but it actually got better. Like two and three got better anyway, and then it just kind of fizzled out. Uh, I was reminded of Fear the Walking Dead episode where Victor had stumbled on a frequency that was somehow allowing him to speak with a dying Russian astronaut. Hello? Hello? They have an interesting bonding moment, uh, and uh, Vyshenko is uh thirsty for uh, uh you know one gla- one more last glass of vodka hello this is cosmonaut Valery Stepanovich Vashenko of the space Coast. and he teases victor for being an american i saw the lights go out on the world three days before my scheduled three entry I, s- I saw the lights go out on the world three days before my scheduled re-entry. As a, as a dramatic, that's what he says. Uh, so he had watched the, the world die from from orbit. Very dramatic show. I speak to you from my grave. A dramatic show. I speak to you from my grave. This episode, in my opinion, was extraordinary. I think it was uh, season three of episode eight of Fear the Walking Dead, and that's exactly when it was uh, 3.8 of that season so anyway if you watch any of the fear of the walking dead just watch the first three seasons they're it's actually they're actually pretty killer i liked it uh last words are for fools but not said enough karl marx last words are for fools but not said enough the world will not die until you die do not wait for your death bed to enjoy your champagne my friend have a glass for me so that uh, that is one of my favorite all-time moments of the series. Wow, just such a great moment. Anyway, uh, here we are at season ten, and the action sequences are still really good and well thought out. It's uh, with just a, just a slight bit of cheesiness. I enjoyed the ghost ship attack. Uh, that was fun, and these types of scenes are uh, what this show was built on. That was good, showing that that uh, teamwork is that all uh, is what all of this is about. This entire show has been about teamwork, like, you know, about 
people breaking down their egos and allowing themselves to work together. That's <laughs> that's that's essentially what this show is about. Something hev uh, heavily emphasized when I was growing up was teamwork, and uh, it's nearly it's not nearly enough now. So I celebrate the show for that, and I I, I celebrate the show for championing championing that um, that message. Dan Fogler, Luke, uh, one of one of the musician the one musician on the show. Uh, this flirting exchange moment was completely, totally cringeworthy. Uh, you know, they're talking about the crateful hot dog trophies and Jules has to emphasize, do you need a strong woman to help you with that? Um, you don't have to say strong woman. This is uh, pretty uh, manipulative. Um, and then she goes to saying, yes, I'm flirting with you. And as am I with you, he, he responds. So very just very cheesy and one dimensional and it's it's like it's it's almost like it's made for children it's it's for definitely it sounds like to me like they're 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 catering to a younger audience that doesn't that isn't as uh sharp i don't know what do you think do you think that that's what that's what's happening maybe they looked at their demographic and 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 saw that like a lot of younger people are watching the show now and i'm just losing interest now to this point so seeing uh, Daryl and Michonne bond was was really good. It was great to see them. The continuous bond between Judith and RJ is good. But when they pan away from the from the threatening mask, uh, there is absolutely nothing to back it up. I don't know. This was just weak. Um, it, it, it's maybe maybe it's just because the whisperers weren't just didn't be. I they just I don't know. For some, I, maybe it's because they just weren't built. I'm just thinking out loud now. Maybe it's because that they just weren't built as strongly. Maybe that they just weren't built up to being that much of a threat. I don't know. I do enjoy the style The style of this episode, though. The style of it was very interesting. It, they show this tipping off point from just from that one point, and they show you a different perspective from the tipping point, and then show you a title of each and every section or chapter, which was cool. I, I, I like that. The first title was Training Day, and now we're on Skin. The opening of each of these chapters uh, begins with Aaron on the radio talking uh, to another faction, um, alerting them to the uh, to the existing threat or speculation or alert. Uh, describing the skin mask, Michonne undermines him. This show has become so uh, become a full on western with all of the traveling by horse. Uh, the very next scene, Aaron asks Michonne if we are the good guys. Uh, you know, we're you know we're the villains of someone else's story, and we're the hero of our own type of thing, a threat to someone else's survival, and that is a question that we have always asked. That's a question that we've the the, the audience has always asked. But I feel like the way that this was phrased wasn't executed well, and I could be wrong. Please correct me if I'm wrong in that. But it it feels like it could have been executed better the way it was outlined and kind of misdirected i don't know I, to me it just wasn't as i guess i just didn't feel it. it it felt like he was reading lines and not like saying something he would normally say i guess michonne saves aaron and the echo of rick's memory is expressed by michonne's frantic reaction to crossing the borders on a bridge the whispers have a nuclear weapon uh, that is re-emphasized here as well, discovering the campsite, finally uh, discovering the skins. The problem is, is that this is, they don't have any way of determining when the skin have shown up there. So that's cool and all, but it just doesn't, I don't know, for some reason it's not threatening. So they have to like, I don't know what they have to do here, but they have to make these skins that are that they're discovering like in all these random places. They have to make that something more threatening. And I don't know what that is. I don't know how to do that. Maybe they should have um, eluded to something else. Maybe they should have distracted us with something else. But it's like just discovering skins in their territory. I guess that that's what they're showing. They're seeing skins in their own territory, which is fine. But for some reason, it just doesn't. I don't know. You help me out. What do you, what do you think would actually make them fe seem more threatened by this? What would what would they be discovering? In their, you know, in their territory, to be deeming this uh, a bad thing, maybe people tied up, or maybe like walkers who, who are chained up, who were who they knew, you know, like people that are extras, but people who they that, that were part of a faction. I don't know. <laughs>